Hey everyone, Nick Bolezzo, hopeless, so very hopeless guitar enthusiast with, oh, oh I got a little lightheaded there. Nick Bolezzo, hopeless guitar enthusiast here with you once again, and I got so many dang projects going on here. I've been building guitars, spraying lacquer, shooting videos, editing videos, buying stuff to do demos and reviews. I, it's hard to keep all these straight and organized. So I have decided to organize my videos in different series -es -es -es. I'm going to make series -es -es of my videos for your viewing pleasure. Now I am obsessed with guitars so much that just playing them, buying, selling, trading them is not enough. I've got to create them. I fully admit I'm no luthier. I don't have a lot of skills with my hands. I mean, I grew up in a house that where if it wasn't fixed with duct tape, it wasn't fixed correctly. So I never learned like woodworking and do it yourself, fix it type stuff. So I don't have those skills. However, I'm more concerned with sort of the finishing part of the guitar building process. I love setting guitars up, wiring electronics, doing fret work, carving nuts, but particularly, I love spraying lacquer. I really want to dedicate a good chunk of my life to learning how to finish guitars and finish them very well. So that being said, I have several guitar projects that I'm currently working on, and I've decided to start a new series titled, What You Build It? In this series, we're gonna be taking a look at all of my personal guitar projects, guitars that I build myself. So we're gonna see everything from the raw wood all the way up to the finished playable product. In this very first episode, I've got six guitar projects to share, two of them that are basically finished, two in various stages of finishing, and two that are raw wood. So sit back and relax as I show you all the projects that I have on the table right now. All right, I wanted to share some of the projects that I have coming down the pipeline for all 12 of you who care and just excited about practicing basically finishing and fret work and doing some builds. So this one I've showed off a little bit. It's a it's a new baby of mine. Uh, it's still, it's basically done, but I need to do a little finishing, some finishing touches on it. But this is my mahogany bodied, dog haired finish S-type. And I'm real proud how this came out for a first try on this finish. This is basically a black stain with white grain filler. And then the neck is a bound, all parts neck, all painted black. Basically all gold hardware, black three-ply pick guard. These pickups are really, they sound really great, even though they weren't the ones I intended to put in there, but those are the uh, Dogtown Custom left-hand stagger gray bottoms, kind of like a 68, 69 era, and they sound really good in this guitar. But I bought a set specifically for this one, and I might switch them out. But I got to glue in the nuts still, maybe do some touch-ups on the frets. This is Evo Gold fret wire, a Wilkinson compensated vibrato, locking vintage looking style tuners. So I'm really proud with this one. So it was good for a first try. I hope I can get better and better at that finish. Now that one was my sort of opposite. Oh, what the hell, I'll show it. You guys have seen this, but I like showing it off. People like this one. Whenever I post a pick or something, people really do like this guitar. So it's kind of looks like a Mary Kay, but I've been calling it a chinchilla finish because I think they kind of called that Ceruz finish where it's lighter, that style. I think that's what they called it. But whatever you want to call it, dog hair, reverse dog hair, TV white, Mary Kay. It looks cool. It's whitewash with uh, black filler and then I put a transparent white on the top of it. Gold hardware. Again, gold fret wire, the locking, vintage looking tuners. So it's basically a 57-ish style guitar. So people people seem to like that one. And it's got, again, Dogtown NOS pickups in it from 1956. Okay, so here's the ones that are kind of raw. So I'm gonna show you stuff that isn't done yet, but I'm kind of excited to do some build series on them and see if you're interested. And again, these are these Rondo Music cases. I actually really love them. They, they fit Strat and Tele type bodies really well. So this one, is a spruce top, thin line style guitar. Spruce top, alder core, and a zebra wood 
back. The neck is one piece walnut with a contrasting maple skunk stripe and plug at the uh, headstock. And there is some incredible, I don't know if you can see that, but there is some incredible figuring in that walnut. And this one is finished. When I open the case, you can smell the, the uh, gassing <laughs> of the nitro. But what's cool about this is I custom ordered this body. And this is kind of pattern off of a prototype that was made in 1967, where it actually had, I think it was all zebra wood that was hollowed out with the spruce top. And that was supposed to be the Thin Line series. These are hollow and there's no F hole. So it's actually a hollow, semi-hollow guitar with no F-hole. It's a triple A spruce top, and there's actually multi-ply binding. So the top, there's actually three-ply binding around the whole thing. I painted the sides black. I know the early ones were maroon. I don't know what the prototype was. There's already some lacquer checking because I used shellac, and shellac will contract and break the uh, nitro lacquer on top. But look at that zebra wood. I really love that. With the walnut, now, of course, the original had a two-piece maple cap. This one has a walnut, so it's a little bit different. Not really going for any kind of replica. I just wanted to make something in that style. So it's gonna be 60s style. Again, Dogtown John on a bee farm <laughs> in Wisconsin. He winds all my pickups to my specs, and they actually have NOS 1966 wire pickups, the three-ply guard, squared off knobs, top hat, I'm gonna fret this. I think I'm gonna do Evil Gold again because I really like that fret wire. I actually have a set of F tuners for that, which I know blasphemy. And this is finished in mostly shellac. And if you look, what's cool is all the uh, Mother of Pearl is turned like a golden color. So that one I'm really looking forward to when it's done. It just needs to be wet sand buffed out, fretted, nut cut, all that stuff. Now here's one I'm really excited about. And that one, this one I started in 2015. So there's actually a uh, picture in the neck cavity of that one where I, I start dating, where I start finishing work on it. And June 2015 is the first date. This one I bought around the same time. It's around 2015. And look at this case. Isn't that cool? It's like a blue tweed case. Something new, something different. So this guitar is really interesting. And no, don't adjust your screens, it's not backwards. So what this is about is, you know, my dad really has nothing in common with me. He's in the old classic car and muscle cars. I'm into guitars and various other artistic stuff and music and all that crap. So we never got along like that. And I figured if we could make worlds collide, I was gonna build a guitar that was kind of patterned off of the cars he was buying. And one car that he had that he, that he absolutely loved was a 1969 Pontiac GTO in Liberty Blue Metallic. And at the time he says, I'm done with cars, this is it. I love this one, I'm gonna keep it forever. It makes me feel young, I love it. And of course, three years later he sold it. I get it, I'm worse with guitars, so I know how it goes. But at the time when he had it, you know, and he's left-handed, and I've never built a left-handed guitar before. I said, it'd be cool if I made a left-handed guitar that was from that era, 1969, and paint it in the automotive lacquer to match. So this is this was custom made by actually B. Hefner, and this is a licensed by Fender B. Hefner neck. Uh, the body's alder, just paint grade, and it's actually left-handed, and the neck was left-handed too, so I got the dots here, and it's routed for F tuner, so I actually have a set of left-handed F stamp tuners, which is funny, I'm probably the only person who's bought those secondhand. And if you notice here, it's so basic setup, but I actually had them route a right-hand vibrato because A, I don't like getting parts for left-handed vibratos, but I figured I'm gonna be the one that's playing it, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to have a unique thing where I've got left-handed, like kind of voodoo style reverse, with the right hand trim. And then I custom ordered from Warmoth because they were the only place that had the material was a black, red, black three-ply pick guard. I could get it in right hand, but I can't get it in left hand. So I had them made me one, they're shipping one to me and a back plate to match, which kind of mimics the uh, red line tires. I'm gonna paint it in Liberty Blue Metallic. I think I'm just gonna do a natural finish. I'm tempted to do a matching headstock, but I'm probably just gonna do a, mat a, mat a natural finish on the, uh, the neck itself. But what's really cool about this, this just came today. What's that, I'm gonna touch up. So I actually purchased automotive lacquer. That's the primer. But I actually, there's two colors I bought. 
But this is actually the Liberty Blue Metallic, the 1969 color. And I've already opened this up and kind of mixed it and just put it on some samples. And it looks really good. And this stuff is extremely expensive. It is not cheap. This was, this was a lot of, just can, it was a lot of money. I have enough probably, that might finish a few guitars. So if it comes out good, I could probably do another one. So I'm really, and actually what else did I get? Yeah, I got Milano Maroon. I got a 66 Corvette cover color too. So that will eventually go on there, but I'm really excited about finishing. I can't wait to spray these necks and these bodies. <laughs> the other project here that's kind of interesting, this is an all mahogany body T-type. It's one piece, it's one solid piece. And I've dyed it just a brown stain called Kona. And the idea is I'm gonna do a dog hair on this, and this is supposed to replicate my dad and stepmom's dog, Coco, who's a purebred Australian Shepherd and is a total nut job. I call him Wiggle Butt. And I'm gonna make the Coco caster. <laughs> so I've already kind of started experimenting. I have a matching mahogany and ebony neck. So this was stained with the same thing, the same cone of stain, but I grain filled it with white pore filler. It looks cool, didn't come out exactly how I wanted it to. The heel's not the nicest. I plan on clear coating it, seeing how it looks, and then doing this to match. So this will be the Coco Caster once it's done. And this one's in production. I just, I've got so many freaking projects going on. I just don't know when I'll be able to get to it. I hope to do the white grain filler soon. So this match is, we're in late September now. So we're running out of spray time here in the Chicagoland area but I think I'll be able to get it in. I think October will be a decent month to spray. Excited about that to make the dog-inspired Coco Caster. Wanna go for a walk? Go for walkies? Yeah? All right, here's the one that will probably be the least popular, but I've always wanted to kind of do this style. I haven't done it yet. I've rarely owned this type of guitar, but I figured, you know what, as long as I'm practicing finishing and I want a little bit of a challenge, I'm gonna try this. This one, of course, is kind of like a Jaguar style body, vintage style, uh, American Alder, and it's not finished. The routes need to be taken in the contours. They're not, they're not there. So I kind of don't, I'm not really a woodworker. I know I could probably do it pretty well with some rasps, and some Orville Sanders, but I'd rather just start spraying. That's what I wanna do, spray and finish work. That's what I wanna do. I have a box full of necks here. Actually, it's getting whittled down, so I'm actually finishing my product project, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. Here's the matching neck. So what is the plan with this one? I plan on making a shell pink guitar. I'm a absolute fanatic over vintage Fender custom colors. Of course, shell pink is probably the rarest. There's hardly any actual surviving examples to this day. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna pull the frets out of here and refret it with the gold fret wire. It's gonna have all gold hardware. I had pickups custom made for me. I have a black pick guard, which I think the pink in the black, that looks really well. So it's gonna be pink, black plastic, and all gold hardware. So I'm gonna probably just wire it traditional Jaguar style. I've never done that before. I've never wired, I've worked on some, but I've never wired one from scratch. So that will be a challenge. But I think in shell pink, I'm even tempted to just go overboard <laughs> and do the whole thing. Shell pink, even the neck, but I know all people will hate that because they love their satiny necks. What is that? Is that all the projects that I have? I hope you enjoyed some of these projects. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you're excited to see, what you want me to do video series on, and I'd be more than happy to post them. So since I shot that video showing all my projects, I've done some marathon guitar finishing, and here's that shell pink Jaguar body that you saw raw at the end of that video and it's actually been completely shot and clear coated. And also here is the neck where I pulled the frets out and put a matching shell pink on the peg head, which came out really nice. And here is the Coco Caster with the Cerus dog hair finish. And here is that lefty strap body finished in the Liberty Blue Metallic 1969 Pontiac GTO color. And this one actually came out really, really nice. And I even decided to do the matching color on the headstock with a satin finished neck. 
So these are all coming out very, very nicely. I'm super pleased with the results. So at this point, they've all been clear coated and we're just kind of waiting for the nitro, the gas off and to firm up a bit. So I want to wait at least a month until I start wet sanding and buffing these out. But I really, really hope that you'll join me on this journey as I learn how to build these guitars. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you have a lot of fun and please, like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you want to see. And if you're a builder already, I'm always open to pointers and criticisms, but stay tuned for some build series on these guitars as I show the spraying uh, process and all the finish work that I'm going to be doing. So this is Nick Belezzo, Hopeless Guitar Enthusiast, signing off. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you at a late night Mexican restaurant at two in the morning, probably.